I do not read books at the extent that you do. So we're going to talk about these two books. Uh, Andrew, good to have you with us. And now's a great time uh, to get into a book, or a few, because a lot of people are self-isolating. It's a good time to pick up a book. Absolutely. And I didn't bring my two books with me because they both decided they're going to self-isolate, and I think we should respect that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but yes, absolutely, it is a great time to be reading, to get to that to be read pile that a lot of us have, um, you know, those big long towers of books and you just keep buying more, so it's a great time to dig into that. It's a great time to let your children get into reading mm. because they're going to be staying home and you're probably going to run out of things to do Yeah, PlayStation home. and Xbox can only go so far. Maybe it's a good idea to put a book in their hand. So one of those, as you talk about this big pile of books of yours, Andrew, I'm imagining uh, that Grown Ups by Marion Keys is making its way to the top of your little pile? Well, it had made its way to the top of my pile, and I'm very glad that it did. It's really one of those funny, poignant stories that just warms your heart and makes you laugh at the same time. So it's about a big family. It's three sons, their wives, and all their children. And they have these family dinners, and they seem like this wonderful, close family. They do everything together, and they, they really do seem like a perfect family. But then one day, one of the sister-in-laws gets a concussion. And that night at the family dinner, she just starts spewing. All the family secrets come out, everything that she knows, and she t starts telling everybody exactly what she thinks of them. So it just causes chaos. Sounds like Christmas time. It does. And it's like watching a train wreck. You just can't stop reading. And so the book starts with this evening and then sort of rewinds and shows how you got to that point. Really a brilliant book. Uh, but many people do describe uh, uh, Marion Keyes as, as something of a comic writer, and it's difficult when you're talking about families uh, to try and, and get the humor, but also the seriousness across. Is she still coming across as a comic writer uh, in this? For sure. One of the things that she explores, and really brilliantly so, is the way that we often think that once we reach a certain age or adulthood, we're going to have made it, we're going to know exactly who we are, we're going to be wise. And For the record, it never happens. No, exactly. If you're anything <laughs> like me, you realize this is never going to happen. You're probably going to end up being 80 years old and still think, what on earth am I doing with my life? <laughs> so this is what she explores in this book, how adulthood becomes this thing where you're still messy. You're still trying to navigate your th way through life and um, not knowing really what it is that you're doing. Uh, let's talk a little bit about a local writer. So obviously it's a great time to, to get your hands on a book. If you can, have it delivered to your house. Try not to go out and buy one if you can avoid it. Uh, and we need to talk about a local writer as well because uh, having someone like Marion Keys is great, but a bit of local flavor, uh, Andrea, is always great. Tell me about uh, Kurt Ellis's In the Midst of Wolves. So this is a dark psychological thriller set in Johannesburg. I'm so glad that there's crime fiction set in Johannesburg and not in Cape Town because for some reason I always seem to find books that are set in Cape Town. So this one's in Johannesburg. It's about a young woman whose body is found dismembered and the SAPS has just formed a new uh, behavioral unit based on the FBI's scientific or uh, behavioral sciences unit. So they're looking at the psychological aspects of crime. Um, and they're using this consultant, a former detective, Nick Creed, who is your typical hard-boiled detective. He's got a huge issue with alcohol and drugs. He has all these inner demons that he's trying to battle, and now he has to try and find this killer. What's really interesting about it is that there's this... Uh, idea in the book that it, the crime may have been committed by someone who uh, is looking for or that it's a ritualistic muti murder so there's got this uh, there's this little bit of a mystical uh, supernatural element to it as well but what you're going to get from this book is it, it's not particularly difficult though it is dark but you will get everything that you're looking for in crime fiction your torture detective the chase for the killer and obviously with some great local flavor. I was about to say, it's very nice to have something about Johannesburg because those of us in Johannesburg can now relate. We don't all have a mountain where crimes take place. Andrew, let's go through uh, your top ten. This is, I always feel like we need a drum roll. I've said this before to you on air. Can we get a drum roll for this uh, segment next time? Your top ten, Andrea. People are stuck at home. 
These are the books that you're saying they must get their hands on. What I have just we got? have to correct you. It's not my top 10. It's the top 10 according to exclusive books. So this is according to sales. Okay, so according to sales, these are the books that people yes. should be getting. Go for it. What have we yes. got? Yes, so we're starting with Grown Ups by Marianne mm -hmm. Keys. Um, that's the one that I just spoke about. Yep. So great book to get into. Not too difficult, um, but that's quite a thick book, but that just means it's nice and juicy. So the second one, it's been on the list for a few weeks as well, The 5 a.m. Club by Robin Sharma. So we know him as the author of The Monk Who Sold His Ferrari. So this is his uh, look at people who are getting up at 5 a.m. and being good people, not like the people in Grown Ups at all. <laughs> These are the people who've got themselves sorted in life. Number three, The Mirror and the Light by Hilary Mantel. She was in the number one spot last week, now in number three. This is the latest book in her trilogy on Thomas Cromwell. Also, Really a juicy book to get into. It's about 800 pages long. So now that people have got time, here you go. This is what yeah, you've you got. You've got no excuses into. now. You've got nowhere to go. No, exactly. Now, this one is interesting. I, I, I wanted to, to jump in there. This is going to catch, I think, a lot of people's attention. This number four. So just elaborate on this number four for me, if you can, because this looks like, for South Africans' audience, this could be very interesting. Absolutely. This is a juicy book as well. The ANC Spy Bible by Mo Sheik. Mm. So this is taking a look at uh, the world of spies during the 1980s when we still had the apartheid government. So lots of secrets being revealed. Very, very juicy as well. So I think this is one book that, if you like uh, nonfiction, that this is something to get into, uh, really very interesting to see how things worked back in the day. I'm putting an asterisk next to that. I'm buying that one this week. That's, that's my book choice for this week, by the way. All right, number five, the subtle art of not giving a, you can finish the sentence. A fudge. A fudge. Of course it's a fudge. What else would it be? <laughs> By Mark Manson. This book also being uh, in the top ten for quite a number of weeks now. Uh, just, it's, it's quite just as the title says, it's almost like a self-help book, but not really. Just to get you into the sense that you don't need to let everything out there get to you. It feels like it needs to go on a slogan on the side of a coffee cup as well that you can leave on your desk when your boss walks in. Uh, so from number five, Andrea, let's head over to uh, Charlie Maxey. Am I saying it right? Maxey, I think. Right. Um, the Boy, the Mole, the Fox and the Horse. This is a book aimed at children, but it's really lovely. This is, he's been called the, or the book has been called the new Winnie the Pooh. So it's beautiful illustrations and it's about a boy who meets a mole, a fox and a horse on a journey. And so these beautiful illustrations in between, um, really moving, little messages for kids in there. So if you're looking for something for younger children, I would say probably between six and eight, mm -hmm. this is really a lovely book for them. You can see just from the illustration in the front, it does have that almost early Winnie the Pooh sort of feel to it as well. So it actually looks lovely. Uh, the Boy, the Mole, the Fox and the Horse is a, uh, number six on the list. So number seven, uh, A Long Petal of the Sea. Isabella Allende, so this is her latest offering. She is almost a guaranteed bestseller every time she brings out a book. This one is about a journey from Spain to Chile. A lot of her books are set in Chile, and this is happening, um, I think, is around the 1900s, early 1900s, this journey that takes place. Um, and on a ship, you find the a poet, Pablo Neruda, who is um, uh, uh, setting this journey or going out on this journey, obviously fiction, but uh, so there's a lot of poetic elements to this as well. I like the way you said that name. It was very nice. All right, so Megan De Bayer is telling us how to raise a modern man. So she's a psychologist, and this book is about how if you're struggling with your preteen or your teenager, um, they just don't want to listen to you or they're being moody, how do you deal with that? And how do you raise him to be a good modern man? And now I think with many young uh, boys sitting at home over the holidays, this might be some good advice, I think, for parents as well. That's number eight, How to Raise a Modern Man by Megan DeBayer. Uh, Sarah J. Moss has House of Earth and Blood. This is part of a new series that starts, a new fantasy series, uh, the Crescent City Fantasy Series. Mm -hmm. And it's about a half face, a half fairy, half human character Bryce, who has to, uh, who wants to take revenge in this world of magic and fantasy mm. and danger. So another one for those that we can uh, uh, sign off to the uh, world of fantasy news. No doubt there'll be a movie about it or something in a couple of years as well. And then let's end off with your number, well not your number 10, the number 10 according to uh, exclusive books. 
So number 10 is American Dirt by Janine Cummins. This book has made a lot of, or caused a bit of a stir. It's about uh, the struggle of a Mexican family who arrive in the southern parts of America from Mexico. And obviously we know the issues experienced by a lot of uh, people from Mexico who come into the United States. So it's about that. Uh, one of the issues that has been highlighted by a lot of people is did Janine Cummins have the right to write the story? Because she's not Mexican. She hasn't um, had, had that experience. So uh, a lot Who's of debate. Lens is she looking through? Absolutely. Um, the debate around this book. But I think it's because of that, it's very well worth reading. And I always like to do this to you, Andrea. I know we spoke about Grown Ups as one of your feature books. Uh, of the top ten that we have here, which is the one that you think, if you had to go and buy one of these from exclusive books, which one would you recommend someone picks up? I really think Grown Ups. And, you know, it's because it's such a juicy book, uh, it's nice and thick, so you can really get into it, but it's not too challenging to read, and it's just such a delight. Andrea, as always, lovely to have you on to talk about these books as well. Andrea van Dijk uh, joining us to take a look at some of the big books uh, in South Africa uh, at the moment and that top ten and that book by uh, exclusive books that Andrea is recommending as well. Marion Keys, uh, Grown Ups, is the book you need to get you through uh, some self-isolation. now.